Good morning YouTube, welcome back to another vlog. Today you're joining me here in Bedford. I'm starting this one at home before I head to Houston in Texas. Now Houston isn't very interesting, so instead of showing you me sunbathing, which is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what it is like to be cabin crew and work for an airline. During the day, I'm gonna try and film a few things on my phone and then once I get to Houston, I will talk you through my typical day and I'll put those videos in over the top, as well as go through a few frequently asked questions that people like to ask me. So to kick things off, I'm gonna show you what I like to pack for a trip. So this is the bag I like to take. Generally for a three day trip, I'll just take this smaller bag and put it in the cabin. If we're on a four day trip, then I'll probably pack a bigger bag and check it into the hold. So for today, it's just a three day trip and I'm packing my NMDs. I'm gonna take some flip flops to wear by the pool. I've got some protein shakes. I've got my laptop charger. I've got a belt and this space will be occupied by my camera stuff. In my shoes, I like to put a European and US plug adapter and I take those everywhere. They never leave my bag. Uh, I've got my hairbrush in this shoe. I've got my shaver and the little shaker so it doesn't rattle around. Over this side, I've got my clothes. So I've got a spare shirt to wear on the way home. I've got two t-shirts, gym shorts, a gym vest, swim shorts, denim shorts, and a jumper, and some jeans. And then down here, I've got underwear and socks. Now, as well as this bag, I'll take this smaller bag. Generally, most cabin crew have what's called a topper, and they would be a bit more of a box than my slim bag. People often say to me, how do you fit everything in there? And I don't know, I just don't have much to take, really. <laughs> so in here, I've got my laptop. I've got my gilet, which I wear during the service. I've got this folder, which I don't really look at, but it's got a lot of general cabin crew information, like aircraft diagrams, um, some like certificates and stuff like that. Uh, just on me, just in case. Uh, I've got my iPad, which has also stuff like aircraft diagrams and the onboard announcements, if you ever have to do that. Um, I've got a portable charger. I've got my toothbrush, uh, passport, phone charger and then I'll also put in my liquids bag in my liquids bag I like to take aftershave deodorant hair stuff I've got these two little smaller ones which I decant larger products into so I've got moisturizer and face wash and then I've got sun cream because I'm going to a hot destination toothpaste back there and a hand sanitizer so there we go that is what I like to pack Probably not much different to what most people would pack to go on holiday. If I do short haul, so anything in Europe, you're not allowed to check a bag into the hold, so I'll always take the smaller bag. But like I said, if it's a longer trip, then I'll probably take a bigger bag and then I'll just take the topper. You could take all three bags on a longer trip if you wanted to, but I think that's a bit overkill for two days away at max. So yeah, that's what I like to pack. I'm gonna head to the airport now, so I will catch up with you in Houston. Ah and we've made it to Houston. It is 20 past eight local time, 20 past two in the UK. I'm gonna head down for a drink with the rest of the crew, so I will catch up with you tomorrow, but I'll quickly show you around the room. So here is the view out of the window. We are staying in downtown Houston. Here is the bedroom. And here's the bathroom. I'm gonna get changed now and head down for a drink with the rest of the crew and I will catch up with you in the morning. Okay, so let me talk you through a typical day at work for me. As you saw, I start the journey off at home and I live about an hour away from Heathrow Airport. For most flights, I need to be there an hour and a half before takeoff. So I like to leave two hours before I need to be there, one hour to get there and one hour to allow for any traffic. Once I get to the airport, I'll usually have a bit of time to kill, so I'll go to Cafe Nero and get a coffee and sit and watch the planes, because I'm a bit of a plane geek. About 10 minutes before my report time, I'll head down to the briefing room, and depending on which aircraft I'm flying on will depend on how many crew are there. For the 380, we have 22. For the 777, there is 11 or 13. For the 787, there is eight or 10. And then for the smaller aircraft, it depends. It could be three, four, five, six, seven. In the briefing room, we'll go through working positions. So which cabin everyone's gonna be working in and which door they're gonna be sat by. And we'll also go through some scenarios for emergency 
situations, so something medical, something about the aircraft like opening the door or a decompression and that makes everyone legal to fly. Everyone has to participate in the briefing. Once we finish the briefing, we will head through security. We have a separate crew security area. Just like normal, you have to get all your stuff out your bag, your laptop, iPad, liquids and then we head to the gate. Once we get on the plane, we will carry out a few checks, like all the equipment by our seat and in our area, make sure it's all there. We'll do some kind of catering checks to make sure that all the food is there. And we'll make sure that the cabin is looking how it should be. And if there's any issues, we can report that to the turnaround manager. The next step is boarding. So everyone comes on board. Once everyone is on board, we will have to do the safety demonstration. And then after that, we take our seats for takeoff. Before we can take off, we have to make sure that the cabin is secure so that means checking that everyone's got their seatbelt on, seats are upright, tray tables are away and then in the galley as well making sure everything is put away and all the latches are down so as we're going down the runway or as we're in the air nothing's flying around. Once we're in the air the service begins typically it starts with a drinks round and then goes on to the food and then after that we do IFR so if anyone wants to buy something from the magazine and then we will go on break. How the breaks work is we will take the duration of the flight that is remaining, take away an hour and a half for the second service before landing, and then cut that time in half. Half the crew will go on the first break, half the crew will go on the second break. So for a 10 hour flight, typically let's say three hours to do the first service and to give time for everyone to eat. An hour and a half for the second service, that makes four and a half hours in total, which leaves five and a half hours in between. Cut that in half, which means everyone gets two hours, 45 minutes on break. And while you're on break, you will generally go to the bunks depending on which aircraft you're on. Pretty much every aircraft has bunks. There's only a few 777s on the BA fleet that don't have bunks, which is very annoying. Whilst you're not on break, but the other half of the crew are on break, your job is to occupy the galleys, uh, 1020 call bells, you might have to make food for people in first because they can eat whenever they want. You have to do toilet checks. So every half an hour you need to make sure the toilets are looking clean, they're all stocked up and there's no signs of anything dodgy going on. We do juice rounds as well. So we walk around with a tray of juice, which is good for cabin presence. And it means people get a drink and it stops them having to get up to come to the galley or it stops them pressing the call button. As well as this, you can just sit around, read the paper. I like to, you know, look out the window, take a few time lapses maybe. Um, get something good for my Instagram story. As long as you're doing your toilet checks and juice rounds and everything like that, you are free to just take a seat and read the paper or magazine. After that, we'll have the second service. Usually it's a quicker service than the first one before we come into land. So generally it will be afternoon tea or breakfast. And then we will secure the cabin again for landing. Once we're on the ground, all the passengers will disembark and it is our job to then do a sweep through the cabin, make sure no one's left anything behind, put any extension seat belts and life jackets back in their right place, empty all the overhead lockers to make sure everything is clear, and then we get off. Coming back into London, we have a separate crew lane to get through customs, and in most outstations, there will be a separate crew lane as well where we can skip the queue in a way. Once we're through customs, we can collect our bags. If we've checked a bag in, it comes to the same carousel that everyone else does. Sometimes the people who work in the airport will take our bags off for us because they can see a certain label that we have on there, which is nice and it speeds things up. And then we head onto the crew bus, which takes us to our hotel. And that's it. That is essentially what we get up to as cabin crew. I don't want to be too detailed because I don't want this video to go on forever. So I'm just going to run through a few questions that people normally ask me. First up, how long do you get at the destination? This depends where you go. If you're doing short haul, you might get 12 hours. If you're doing long haul, it's generally 24 hours. For longer trips, you'll get two days, so 48 hours. There's a few rare instances where you get a five day trip. So you'd have three days down route essentially, so 72 hours. If you do a Singapore, Sydney, that's a nine day trip because you stay in Singapore and then you stay in Sydney and then you stay in Singapore and then you come back home so yeah most places long haul would be 24 hours can you do anything while you're there yes as soon as you get to the hotel and you've checked in that's it you can literally do whatever you want as long as you are back at the pickup time ready to work then you can do anything while you're down route there is a few instances in destinations that are unsafe where we're not allowed to leave the hotel mainly places in Africa how many times a week do you fly this varies as well. I'm sorry, all these questions are gonna be like, it varies. If you do long haul, generally you'd fly there, you'd have 24 hours, you'd fly back. So that would be a three day trip and then you'd get two days off and then you could fly again. If it's a longer trip, you might get three days off. If you do short haul, you could work, I think seven days in a row, but that hardly ever happens, that is very rare. Or you could do short haul into long haul. So you could do like a there and back and then the next day you could do a long haul, like a three day trip, so that would be four days of work. Or you could do like a Euro tour where you stay somewhere in Europe and then you fly back into London and then you stay somewhere in Europe again and then you fly back into London. 
So that would be like a three day trip and then you could do that into a long haul trip. So you might work six days in a row and then you get your two days off or three days off. So it, it massively varies, there's no set schedule but on the whole most people would have like four long haul flights in a month and maybe two short haul flights. Do you get discounted flights? Yeah, we get ourselves and two other people can travel on standby, which means if there's room on the plane, you can get on. If there's not room on the plane, then you're not allowed to get on. But generally you can get on and you're allowed to sit on a jump seat as well, which isn't the most glamorous thing, but if you're desperate to get somewhere, then you are allowed to travel on a jump seat instead of a passenger seat. You can only change the two people every six months, so you can't constantly have different people coming and going. And then outside of that, we have a separate little website, which is a bit like the BA website, but it discounts it a little bit. For that, anyone can travel. You don't have to be nominated. You can buy a ticket for anyone. Do you start with short haul and then do long haul? No, once you're online, you literally do anything. You could have loads of long haul before you ever do a short haul flight. Do you start in economy? VA have recently, I mean in the last couple of months, started doing this where they only train people in economy. And then I think after six months, they get brought back in to do business. And then about a year later, I think maybe they'll do first but when I started, we got trained in economy and business, and then after a year, you get trained in first. So yeah, it has recently changed, and it is now economy, then business, then first. What is your favorite destination to fly to? My favorite destination is Vancouver, because we stay really centrally in the city center, which is great. You can walk to the shops, and it's got all the shops you'd ever want. The exchange rate is a little bit better than the US, so generally stuff is cheaper in Canada. There's also a lot to do there, you know, you can hop over to Bramble Island on a little boat, or you could go to Grouse Mountain, or there's the Capilano Suspension Bridge. It's a good night out, food's good, speaks English, so it's very easy to find your way around. It's got Stanley Park, you know, there's just a lot to do. So yeah, I just like Vancouver. There we go, that's it. If you've got any more questions that you want me to answer, then leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them in. Another video, I hope you found this informative. Like I said, I can't really share too much with you because I don't think BA would be happy with me sharing everything. So yeah, I've tried to share with you what I can and I hope you found it interesting. Right now I'm gonna go do some sunbathing on the roof. I've just been for lunch, so I'll show you what I had. Went to a little uh, Mexican place, which was very nice. Just did a little bit of shopping to pick a few things up. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. Bye-bye. Thank you.